welcome our second speaker, Norma. And with no further ado, please give her a big, a big applause. and currently working as Director of People and Development at HP, I'm a digital agency. But because I don't have time, let's not talk about me, let's talk about my talk. And I'm going to uh, start my talk with one simple question. How many of you like to get naked in front of random people? Hands <laughs> up? Oh yeah. I love the Berlin vibe. Yes, it's really good. <laughs> But most of us actually don't like to get naked in front of random people. It might it be the first couple of seconds in Babali in the spa, or it might it be for the first time in front of a potential intimate partner? We don't feel very yeah, good in these moments. And I can only talk for myself, but for me, I feel vulnerable. And I'm sometimes even afraid of how people might judge me or how they see me. So I don't like to get naked in front of random people. Don't be afraid. I won't. Um, but let me maybe rephrase that question. How many of you like to share their emotions openly at work? At work, not at home. Couple more hands, which is usually a good sign for leadership. But for most of us, it's actually the same thing. We don't like to share our emotions because we are afraid of being vulnerable. We are afraid of being seen as weak or not on top of things. So instead of talking openly about what we think and feel, we would rather cover up. We pretend everything's fine, we are great, we don't have any downfalls, perfect, let's move on. And this is where the paradox begins, because as much as we try to cover up how we feel, as much things will surface once we are stressed, for example. So we will leave traces in our relationships, we will, trace, we will leave traces at work, but potentially the ones that we don't even know about and the ones we are not in control of. And I'm going to come back to that later, what it means. But actually, um, what does it have to do with dating or growing startups, like what is she getting to? Um, I think for me it's the same in dating, this behavior of like hiding things about ourselves that actually would make us more authentic. And I don't know how many of you know this app. Um, of course, I don't. Obviously. <laughs> oh, sorry. But uh, we all know that moment that when you meet someone for the first time, <coughs> we know we have a split second. A split second of swipe or like. And it's not because we are superficial human beings who don't care, but it's rather because our brain immediately determines how trustworthy a face is and how physically attractive you find the other one. And it's actually not an issue as long as we swipe and like, but we also know the other person will do the same. So instead of showing who I truly am um, with all my weaknesses and telling that I'm really jealous and not really that organized in life, I'd rather talk about my best self. I'd rather pretend that I'm great all the time. I would talk about my successes, my passions, things I've learned in the past, but potentially I would not really share who I am, at least not in the first couple of days. And to me, the same is actually true for organizations and how we build relationships at work. Most of us, we hide who we truly are. We rather, like, yeah, try to be perfect. We try to be not to be attached in any way. And if you work in an organization that is currently scaling, so just growing as fuck, um, <laughs> it means that you have to build new relationships all the time. So you have to swipe your like a billion times a day. For example, if you would have been part of the Spotify team in 2017, that would have meant that you needed to swipe or like with a new hire, a new team member, a new boss, three times a day for the course of 365 days a year, every day. That's like Tinder on speed. I'm going to switch this. Um, so that means you would need to cover up who you truly are all the time. And can you imagine how much cognitive resource that eats away? So yes, we are quite good at covering our emotions for a short period of time. But when stress kicks in, big decisions have to be made, or tough conversations have to be held, we crack. So might it be like a shortcut answer on Slack, or no hello, no goodbye in an email, or pushing back very important meetings um, to like avoid conflict, people will notice that something is off, even though you might not notice that you're a bit too direct or unfriendly or just not on top of things anymore. 
And what does it do to our relationships at work if we are actually in that mindset? If I would be a new hire in 2017, and in the first couple of days you're very friendly and welcoming, and after a couple of days you just shit to me, I would either leave or believe that, that I'm wrong, that I'm not good enough, that I might be failing. So what you do with people that are just on board right now is that you use up the fragile relationship credit that you just built so hard. And therewith, we lose one of the biggest to me, not resources, but things we need um, in our working life, which is the trust of our people. So, in a scale-up, that's even more specific, because what we need is people who give everything at any given point. And if you ask the media and entrepreneurs and their interviews and teams, working in a startup that scales sounds just amazing. It's vibrant, it's cool, you know, I don't even need friends because I have Friday beers and all my colleagues, you know, I don't care. I'm going to work all night, we have a ping pong table, blah, blah. So it actually looks like this. Perfect filter, fluffy duffy muffins, you know, it's just all perfect. But if you work with those people and if you actually take time out to truly listen to what entrepreneurs and their teams have to say, it rather looks like this. <laughs> so yes, there is a final product that looks amazing and customers might be happy, but the way to it is just bloody hard. So in these type of environments, we even more need relationships that are not built on a like quick fling, on a like date basis where we pretend everything is fine because not everything is fine. People are excited because when we scale, it means the product um, like just hits a chord, customers want what we have to offer, investors are on your toes to get a piece of the pie, but the downside of these things is that there's a lot of fear in the system as well. Working in the scale-up is an emotional roller coaster, from excitement to anxiety. There's a fear of failure, there's a fear of um, like running out of money, there's a fear that we are not hitting our targets. There's a lot of pressure in the system and that is part of the game. But the question is, if that is true and fear is inevitable, how can we build relationships early on, right at the start, that actually can survive those stressful moments? Because you will crack, you will have bad days, you will be stressed. So how can I build relationships that actually survive that, rather like a good marriage can? You know, that some years are just a rough patch, how do we get through that? And I brought you just um, four simple hacks to just say it as well, um, to, to get that. And the first one is, please kill your darlings. And don't go out and shoot anyone. And, but this comes actually from screenplay writing. And every writer knows that moment of writer's crisis when you realize that if you want your book, your series to be a Game of Thrones success, the protagonist you crafted so long and loved the most probably have to die. So what does it mean? And um, again, still don't kill your coworkers you love the most, and um, we need them. But as a scaling team or a growing organization, that means that we sometimes have to say goodbye to things we love. Like informal conversation, like, hey Joe, could you please, like yelling across the room, doesn't fly anymore with more than five people. Or like even saying goodbye to projects that we once loved, but that are just not making the money we need right now. Or as a founder of a startup like that, it can even mean that your role completely changes that you either have to step up into the CEO position that is, doesn't have anything to do with your passion anymore, or that you even have to step down and get a CEO in that is more experienced. So it can also mean saying goodbye to roles, people, and formats, ways we loved in our culture before. So that's pain. But it's very necessary to build orientation to give people security in how the job's actually going forward. Second of all, because I would really love to encourage you to be getting more emotionally naked uh, at work. But if you do so, if you build the courage, please mind your own business. And I don't mean it in the sense of not caring for your team and their struggles and their needs, because please do. But if you actually want to do that, you have to take care of your own first. Because only, and I'm a psychotherapist and I'm not talking about, only if you take care of yourself first, you can actually take care of others. And as good as we are in like covering up our emotions for a short period of time, as much as we suck in covering up our neurobiology. And the amygdala, like the emotional part of the brain, 
is just a hundred times faster than the thinking part of our brain. So when the amygdala gets triggered, might it be by excitement, might it be by anxiety, might it be by stress, it will hijack your cognitive system and your ability to reason, to be all, hey, everything is fine, yes, um, will drop by 75%. So you will leave traces. But I swear to God, the ones that you're not in control of. So, if you then found the courage and you are good at taking care of yourself first, still please use filters. Because we are amazing at using filters for muffins, on Tinder, on Instagram to look our best. But we are not as good when it comes to filtering what to share openly and what to keep to yourself. And don't get me wrong, because I love transparency and I love sharing. But sharing, just for the sake of sharing, rather causes anxiety than it does excitement. So, rather share things that connect, for example, I'm sometimes afraid to, but we are in this together. Share what gives orientation. So, for example, I don't know, but I will get back to you tomorrow. I will have an answer for you. Share things, even though you don't know better. Share openly, but share with care. And if we only do these three simple things, we actually have a very good chance at outbehaving our competition. And by outbehaving, I don't mean like winning over market shares because this is just a logical consequence, but I, mean, but I mean if you truly care for your people, you will invest in one of the most critical components of success, which is your relationships. Because I believe that it's only strong leaders, strong and reflected leaders, that build strong teams. And only strong teams build strong products. So outcompeting your competition is just like something you have in the stack anyways. And people who feel truly valued and feel treated authentically and cared for, they will give everything, even though it is an emotional roller coaster. So, best Santa. Woo!